ceasefire, Actual. We have eyes on a banished camp, over. Halo Wars in the RTS community was like, console, RTS, what? Well, it's coming to PC now. Very, very excited, Dan. So let's get deep. You talked initially about fear of RTSs. And for a long time RTS player, I'm like, what? I don't understand. I played Age of Empires. I played Civilization 2. These games are relaxing to me. Why are people afraid of RTSs? I know, it's funny, I'm the same way. I grew up so, RTS was probably my favorite genre when I was growing up. So yeah, Starcraft, Total Annihilation, like all of these games. So I'm not personally intimidated about it, but it's interesting when you talk to people, and even around the studio Roger at 343, you know, where a lot of people two, are like, oh, I don't play that, that's, that's kind of that, scary. Yeah. And as we talk to more and more people, you realize there is an intimidation factor um, that I think people just have this impression that there's so much going on, right? I've got to build a base, I've got to collect resources, I've got to manage tech trees, I've got to upgrade my guys, and oh my god. Um, so a lot of what we started to think about was, okay, obviously we want to make a, an RTS, a hardcore RTS for RTS players, but how do you start to make it accessible uh, as well? And how do you start to spoon feed people to, to get into it? As I, I think I mentioned, I do think people are better at it than they realize, right? Because I'll have people who are big LOL players or Dota, or, and they're like, oh, oh yeah, I can't play an RTS. I'm like, you're not that far. If you've been playing MOBAs, you're actually probably better at managing things than you realize. The way we approach it is actually a continuum of modes. So, you know, you've got that hardcore deathmatch mode that everybody expects, and we've got a number of those types of modes. But we have a continuum, and along as you move along that continuum to more the more casual side, we start to remove elements of it. So, you know, we'll remove base building and just start you with a base in, in a couple of modes. Or we'll remove the need for resource collection. And all the way down to this mode called Blitz, that we're gonna be able to talk a little bit more about in a couple of months, that is just made for the person that has literally never played an RTS before, but wants to hop in and check it out. Um, and it takes a lot of those elements out, it's a much lower unit count, so you're not trying to manage too much at the same time. And our goal is that people who've never played before maybe start there and move their way up. Although Blitz is so unique, it's a brand new way to play RTS, I have a feeling a lot of people are just gonna play that, because even if you're a hardcore RTS player, Again, and I can't say too much about it, there's a lot of cool stuff in there that I think people are gonna to wanna to play. Now you've had a development partnership switch for obvious reasons, because it used to be Ensemble, now it's Creative Assembly, and you see that immediately. I mean, the minute you said that, I'm like, oh, you see the design philosophy shift, because now it goes from, oh, a leisurely stroll through the Halo universe <laughs> with some fighting to blah, 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 all the time. Was that why you chose that partnership? Yeah, yeah, you know, we chose Creative Assembly for a couple of reasons. There's the obvious one, right? I mean, if you're an RTS fan, you know these guys. I think they're the best in the business. Um, and, you know, we just really wanted to have the right partner to do this. The other thing is they really understood, they shared a passion for Halo, right? Like, that's what we look for whenever we're trying to onboard a new partner. And they shared that passion with us. So when we got there and started, you know, we had that first meeting and, I'm, you know, I remember the kickoff. I'm like, I really want to make, like, an action RTS. And I had this whole spiel plan, and they're like, dude, we get it. And it was just like within that first meeting, you're just like, yeah, we're going to get along just fine. But yeah, they, they very much shared that notion of like, yeah, let's make things blow up. Let's make it exciting. Let's make this something that everybody can jump in and play. And the partnership's been amazing. I mean, we just love working with those guys. They bring that hardcore pedigree. And also as we shift to PC development and it becomes more of a focus for us, they're an amazing PC house. They've been almost predominantly PC for the entirety of their, their existence. So it's just been a perfect marriage. Now, what has been the line you have to draw from the beauty of getting away from that, the Halo universe seen through the pinhole of a Spartan helmet in the shooter genre to the limitations of not giving away the farm in an RTS because obviously they want to keep that shooter game as sort of their flagship. Mm -hmm. So what were you able to do in the universe? Because it's so vast and it's so rich and we get to see so little in the base titles. Absolutely, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. Because that universe is so rich, I actually feel like we have more creative liberties than the other way around, right? Because there's so much lore and history around the shooter, there's an established line you've got to work from. You know, Halo Wars 2 takes place shortly after the events of Halo 5. So those universes start to come together, which gives you some good opportunities. But for the most part, this is still a separate segment of the universe. It's taking place on the arc, where you know the shooter line has not dealt with that in a very long time. So we had tremendous liberties. And I mean, what that lets us do too is start to create new characters, right? 
You've got Atriox, who is this new character leading up the Banished. He's managed to assemble the Brutes. As you've seen in the videos, he's like able to single-handedly beat up a trio of Spartans. He's also hyper-intelligent. And I think what's very liberating about RTS is I personally think it is a more free vehicle with which to tell a story. I think the challenge you've got in a shooter is if you introduce a villain, you've got to fight the villain, which means you've got to kill the villain. Uh, RTS, you know, in Halo Wars, you're fighting Atriox's armies. So that gives us a longer arc to work with. And I think what's great about Atriox and why, what people really glom to is there's more there than meets the eye, right? I mean, we didn't want to make a cartoony supervillain. I think the best villains are the ones that have some substance to them, maybe think what they're doing is right. Um, and that's absolutely Atriox. The other thing we've done is introduced another character that we talked about at Comic-Con named Isabel, who's a new AI that, you know, Cutter and his crew just got their butts handed to them, come across Isabel, and she's got her own demons because she's been there for a while, but she's able to like help explain how the arc works, help explain a little bit what she knows about Atriox, and becomes a very pivotal character who goes through that arc as well. The Halo universe is about more than just Master Chief and Cortana, right? There's this massive, massive backdrop to it, and Halo Wars is just a great vehicle for us to start to explore some of those other stories. Now you led in beautifully to my next question, because oh, I want to talk about Isabel. <laughs> You've got a brand new start with Isabel, which is exciting, but also a really big burden to get it right and to make it different and not just have her be Cortana, well, I guess Cortana 3.0 or right. 2.5. <laughs> I can't go right on the nose there, but how did you approach that challenge? Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I think, you know, Cortana, when people think AI, they think Cortana, right? She is just that character that established it and fans love her. She's fantastic. She's got her personality and she's got her own arc taking place through the shooter line. Isabel is completely different from Cortana. Um, I think it, when people think AI, you also tend to think perfection a little bit, right? They're these very highly advanced, highly evolved, obviously highly intelligent creatures. As an AI, Isabel is obviously highly intelligent and capable, but what's what a lot of people have kind of missed when we talk about her is Isabel's a logistics AI. She's not a combat AI. She is like, quickly in over her head, right? Like they find her on the Ark and she was programmed for a very different purpose than what she finds herself having to do. And I think that's the beauty of that character, right? Because I mean, we all find ourselves in situations where we're like, damn, I'm totally unprepared to do this. But eventually, uh, you know, we, we like to talk a lot about heroes in the Halo universe. And as a hero, you eventually have to step up and you never choose that path, right? That path is thrust upon you. Isabel, as players will see, is a very pivotal part of the success of Cutter and his crew in this. And as she, and I will dance around because I can't say too much right now, but as you see her wrestling with her past and wrestling with her demons, she, she pops, right? And really becomes this heroic character that everybody really depends on. And, you know, we talked about uh, what makes a good villain. I think what makes a good hero and an approachable hero are those flaws. Right, and I think Isabel is a lot more human than Cortana or some of the other AIs we've had there before because she does have these flaws. She does find herself very much out of her element and like, oh God, what do I do? Um, the, the emotion around Halo Wars 2 is a lot of like what's going on, right? Because for Cutter, Cutter and his crew wake up out of cryo, they have no idea what's going on. They meet this guy, they get their butts handed to. Them like, oh geez, what the heck happened? Even Atriox, to a degree, it's like, who are these humans? What they don't really seem connected to the rest. What's going on? Isabel's like, okay, I guess I'm part of the crew now. Like, so everybody's just trying to figure things out. And the creative opportunities and the storytelling opportunities and the character development opportunities in that environment are massive. So I love Isabel, I think. I am so excited about Isabel, I need to stop myself from saying too much about her. I can't wait till we explore her history and can talk more about her. And I think people are going to love her. I think she's got potential to be our Cortana. Now, you guys are PC. There's going to be a lot of people playing this on PC. So yeah. want to talk specs, because yeah. that's the first thing. It looks so good. There's so much detail that sort of, you know, player feedback, knowing what's going on. That takes a lot of processing power, but you're running it on a fairly, you know, high and mid-grade machine. So what kind of box are people going to need to play this game in a decent state? Right. 
So I mean, right now, obviously, we're early in development, we need higher specs. As we get closer, those specs go down, as, we, as, you, op, as you correctly called it, as we optimize and things like that. It's a little early to call the final spec, but I mean, effectively, we're looking to make this playable on like, if you've got a surface, uh, you're going to be able to play this. That is our target right now. Now, obviously, on the flip side, if you've got a really powerful rig, this thing's going to go right up to 4K. You're going to have incredible, incredible visuals. But we're really trying to hit that range as much as possible. Now, also, with it, it came up in there, but for obvious reasons, you're not, people can't play on PC and then on the Xbox One together because of the click rate and the fact that RTS is still a PC type game, ideally. Now, you were talking about ways to sort of get around it so people can play together, possibly long term in the franchise. So I'm sure people will be interested about that. Yeah, absolutely. So while we are a Play Anywhere title, so if you get it on one, if you buy it on console, you get it on PC for free and vice versa. And your achievements and your progress move with you as you go back and forth. Crossplay was just a nut we weren't able to crack with this. Um, I mean, bluntly, we wanted to. We had it, you know, as something we were attacking in concept. And I often say you start with a larger plate than you end with in game development. And crossplay is something that, you know, fell off. Obviously, the input mechanisms are, are very, very different. We had a number of technical challenges. And, you know, you always have to make choices uh, in game development. That being said, something we would love to do and something we would love to get through, yeah, as we talked about scenarios that we got excited about in crossplay, it was absolutely those collaborative modes, right? I mean, if I'm playing against you and you have some kind of advantage, you know, maybe that's going to frustrate me. If you and I are on the same team, that's just good for me. Um, so these are things we're looking at down the line. Uh, really at this point, I don't know when, but as we start to look at post-launch and even future iterations, you know, these are things we're thinking about. You're planning to launch, like release, in the middle of the long, cold Canadian winter where we're all bored and want something to do in our houses? I remember how cold it gets. Yeah, in, yeah I was I am, I am. was born and raised in Montreal. So, so you know cold? I know cold, yeah, yeah. I know how cold it gets out here on the East Coast. Um, yeah, you know, we did that for a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, our, the lineup in, in Holiday yeah. is, is just monstrous, right? It's crazy. Uh, I, was, I was really, really thrilled. I think February is a great launch time for it. It's when the first Halo Wars launched. You know, we launched in February. And we wanted to give it a little more space, right? We wanted to give it a bit of air to breathe and give, you, you know, give the Canadians something to play in the winter. Yeah, I have not forgotten how bad these winters are.